Hey, it's Sean. And it's Bree. Welcome to Season 4, Episode 5. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about Charles Camshell Hospital in Edmonton, Alberta. Mm -hmm. And Moosehead Inn on Kenosee Lake, Saskatchewan. And in our paramedia segment, we are going to take a look at the 1999 film, The Sixth Sense, starring Bruce Willis, Haley Joel Osmond, and Tony Collette. Already. Yes. Very interesting stuff that is coming at ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how's everything? How is your February going, Bury? Not too bad, not too bad. February was a uh, you know pretty busy month actually. There was Valentine's Day and then my birthday. Ooh <laughs> la la, that's good. <laughs> yeah, and then my dad's <laughs> birthday coming up, so it's a busy month. February. I was kind of glad though it didn't snow until after my birthday. <laughs> well, there you go. You yeah, usually it snows a, before. <laughs> a whole point to your birthday was yeah. no snow. You're exactly. welcome. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> so, how about you? What's new? Oh, you know, um, February's been pretty crazy. Uh, unfortunately, I got COVID. Oh, no. Yes. But I am here to talk about it. It was very mild, thank God. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and then we went to a concert. We went to go see lights. That was a lot of fun, yeah. That was really fun. <laughs> Hey lights, come on our show Hello, anytime. We love you. <laughs> so um, I wonder yeah. if she's ever been on stage like somewhere where it was spooky. I wonder. Oh, I God. you know that would be a really cool thing to kind of talk about because I'm sure she plays many different venues, yeah. venues and and spaces. So I'm sure something's happened at one or the other, and I'm <laughs> something tells me that she's into it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a great concert. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then we were in London, Ontario as well. So we got to kind of tour the city and see what it was all about and do a couple of things there uh, as well. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so and here we are recording the show. That's right. Yeah, so <laughs> let's get right into talking about... Charles Camshell Hospital in Edmonton, Alberta. In 1946, Lord Alexander, who was then the Governor General of Canada, opened the Charles Camshell Tuberculosis Hospital in Edmonton. It was built in a former Jesuit college, which was built in 1910. It was later occupied by the Canadian Army during World War II as an administrative building. It was also used as a medical corpse hospital during the construction of the Alaska Highway from 1942 to 1945. It was also located in Inglewood area, and it was named after Charles Camshell, who was the first commissioner of the Northwest Territories. He was also a geologist and a map maker for the exploration of Canada's north. It was operated by the Indian Health Services of the Department of National Health and Welfare, later transferred to the Department of Indian Affairs. From 1945 to 1947, the hospital operated an occupational therapy program for its Indigenous patients. And in the 1990s, the hospital donated a collection of over 400 arts and crafts made by the patients, and they were donated to the Royal Albert Museum. From the 1960s until the 1980s, it was used in Albertan eugenics program to sterilize Indigenous peoples. This was mentioned in many class action lawsuits against the province of Canada. It was also a place where there was medical testing was performed on natives and from where the indigenous children were abducted to be adopted by non-indigenous. 
A new 385 Charles Camshaw Hospital was completed in 1966 to 1967 at 128th Street and 114th Avenue in Edmonton, Alberta. It was then closed and abandoned in 1996 and condemned due to asbestos and also in part to its history of Canadian genocide and eugenics. It was owned by a number of people over the years with some development in mind and some construction and gutting has taken place, but nothing substantial has been done. In pop culture, The White Coats, which was released in 2004, was filmed in the hospital. In 2006, there was a fire and the firefighters had to fight it from the outside as they had wrapped barbed wire around the staircase to try and keep the homeless population out. As of 2017, the building and its grounds sit empty and are surrounded by a fence. And that's pretty much the the history of... Charles Camshell Hospital, except for the paranormal. So I'm going to turn it over to Bree to give us that portion. Well, that was some interesting information. Yeah, it was some very um, unsettling information, Mm -hmm. actually. Um, It was actually very surprising that that was so recently done. I agree. All right, so as for the ghosts... The fourth floor of the hospital was the psychiatric wing where there were uh, isolation rooms and rumors of shock treatment there. And it was, um, un- and they, people could hear unexplained screams and the anguish of a female, I guess, moaning, whatever. And when they go to look to see who it belongs to, there's nobody there. Uh, There was also the one spirit of a teenage girl, extremely distraught. She was pulling out her her nails, which left her with, like, bloody hands. God, that'd be creepy. She was waiting for her parents, and she kept repeating over and over, when are they coming to get me? Which is awful. It's really sad. Um, On the surgical wing, the second floor, there was um, still, like, blood stains there on the floor in one of the rooms. Um, I remember seeing on something else, I can't remember what it was, but there was like somebody who had died in the room and their body left an imprint on the ground. And no matter what they did, they could not get rid of the stain or whatever, like the decomposing, whatever that was on the ground, right? When the body was there. Mm Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I think I'd be cutting out that piece of floor and replacing it. (laughs) There's also been um, heard a male voice captured on the recorder in the operating room. Uh, I think it was operating room six, they said, and they kept calling out the name Karen, along with some earthly, like unearthly sounding groans. Like, Karen, stop complaining! (laughs) (laughs) And then there, um, and then some people have said they've heard some slamming, um, and it's like hands being pounding down on a metal shelf, and then um, the recorder shuts off. In the auditorium, there have been orbs that have been seen flying around in it. There was the spirit of a very, very sad old, um, older Aboriginal man who had uh, mobility issues, and um, he was looking for his wife. And the spirit of him kept saying, we did not choose to be here. It's very sad. That is very Um, sad. mm -hmm. In the morgue area, there was an elevator that started operating on its own. Now that would creep me out, like the morgue period, but. (laughs) Yeah, I wouldn't be going anywhere near there, just saying. (laughs) Right? You sit there and all of a sudden, you know you're the only one there. (laughs) Yeah. I think, you know, um, you know, the series, The Haunting uh, of Hill House. Yeah. I think that morgue scene really cured that for me, 100%. (laughs) So, yeah, I'm good. That was pretty creepy. I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) And there's also been said that there's footsteps that can be heard on different floors 
um, kind of like a sliding sound with a loud clomp at the end of it. Um, the hospital is very active um, and they have uh, people have experienced a lot of unseen presence around there, some impatience and stuff, always kind of like walking around. So it's definitely an active zone. Well, when, you know, you're doing things like that. And Unhumanely. To, yeah. yeah and, and to a tribe of Aboriginal people who are very spiritual, like, what did you think was going to happen? To right. Area? Absolutely. Like, I Absolutely. would want to the shit out of it myself. Right. Oh, terrible. Well, I mean, these are some of the things that, you know, have is, is in the past of our country. And, you know, we face them every day. And, you know, we talk about them to raise awareness, to show that these things can't happen going forward. Mm-hmm. Not acceptable. Yeah. I don't know if they do all that stuff nowadays and like, I don't know, do they still do shock treatment? Um, I sure as hell hope not. Like, I mean, I honestly think that that has, should have stopped a very long time. It shouldn't even have started. Yeah. 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 So that is all I have for the ghosts. Nice. Well, that was interesting. Like, so there was so much there, um, in, in, as as with regards to spirits and everything, because mm-hmm. so much has gone on and happened. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, very active. So moving forward, we're going to talk about Moosehead Inn on Kennessee Lake in Saskatchewan. All right. Yeah. So as the history goes. For this one, the Moosehead Inn was constructed in the 1960s as the Grandson Hall of Kennessee Lake. Kennessee Lake is a closed basin lake in Saskatchewan. It lies in Moose Mountain Provincial Park in the heart of Moose Mountain Upland. It was built by Ethel and Archibald Grandison to create a fun place for people to dance and socialize with some great music and made this establishment a very popular spot with teens in the resort town. The current owner actually spent his teenage summers at the dance hall. When Archibald passed away, Ethel sold the building to the current owner, Dale Orsted. He converted the main level into a steakhouse restaurant and the second level into a cabaret in the 1990s. This is where the paranormal activity began. As of September 11, 2021, the restaurant is now closed. It was completely destroyed by a fast-moving fire. And this was just after the establishment opened again after a 22-month closure due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There is apparently a financial effort to rebuild and reopen the business. And that is it for the history of Moosehead Inn on Kennessee Lake in Saskatchewan. And I'm going to throw it over to Bree to give us the paranormal history of and what happened there. All right. Bree? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So during renovations, um, there was so much banging going on in the building that... Um, Orsted called the police on more than one occasion because they thought someone was trying to break in. Um, There was objects that moved on their own and also had a habit of disappearing. It was usually small objects like ashtrays and glasses. Um, When the second story was being renovated, extremely loud crashes were going on at night. They were so loud that the noise was linked to a car accident. Like that's how, I guess, loud it was. It was thought that a large metal desk was rising in the air um, and on its own and then was crashing onto the floor. There were also electrical dur- disturbances uh, reported as well with lights going on and off on their own and even the dishwasher would start on its own. All the doors in the building have opened and closed on their own in front of multiple witnesses on more than one occasion. The stalls in the woman's washroom frequently open and slam on their own. Now that would creep me out. <laughs> we go into the bathroom and all of a sudden the door starts opening and slamming. Uh, there have been many reports of unexplained voices and moans heard uh, throughout the building. 
Uh, three separate ghosts and spirits have been said to be present. The ghost of a former cleaning lady, the ghost of a teenage boy who had drowned there, and the ghost of an older man who is believed to be the ghost of Archibald Grandison. Mrs. Grandison was Orsted's net next door neighbor. He was um, fond of her and I guess was kind of keeping a friendly eye on her and didn't mind making an effort to you know, look after her once in a while. <clears throat> As soon as he started to do this, though, many of the paranormal experiences decreased dramatically. And then in 1999, she passed away, and the ghosts and Orsted finally found peace. So maybe that's what they were waiting for. Wow, I've never heard that before, where it just stops. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, that is very interesting and in how that kind of played out. And for me, like from what I take from that, I think that was Archibald waiting for his wife. Right? Yeah, exactly. Hang yeah. on. Yeah, and that's it. That's all that I have. Wow, that was really interesting. I like that one. Mm-hmm. Maybe that'll be the best of season four. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. All right. So we're going to move right into talking about our paramedia segment, which is the 1999 film, The Sixth Sense, starring Bruce Willis, Tony Collette, Haley Joel Osment. So The Sixth Sense is a 1999 American psychological thriller film. It was written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan. And as Sean said, it stars Bruce Willis. He plays the role of a child psychologist and his patient is the character of Jaylee, oh, sorry, a Haley Joel Osment, um, who claims he can see and speak to dead people. This right. movie was actually very fascinating. And I think one of the first that led into that silent and then scary moment right. where everything always had music in the background and then scared you where this one was completely silent. So you jumped because you right, felt because like you were there. You, yeah. <laughs> and I think it also kind of set the tone for this type of movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I know M. Night Shyamalan has done a lot of things since this. He just came out with A Knock at the Cabin. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I I had just seen that myself, and um, you know that was right in there with with his type of style and how he directs and what have you. So it was interesting to see that as well because he's definitely come a long way since The Sixth Sense to now. Um, mm-hmm. I know The Sixth Sense was not his first movie, but um, it was a many. first really yeah. good movie that really caught on with with everybody, seemed to like it at one point or another. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think there was one that I really didn't like. Every one of his movies, I... I like the fact that I can't predict most of the stories. When I go to the theater, if I can predict the movie from beginning to end, I don't enjoy it as much. I like to be shocked. You know what I mean? Just because I read so much and I watch so many movies that when I watch new stuff, I like to see, you know, something new, something they haven't done before. Unless, of course, it's a series, then you, it's what to expect. But, um, but if it's like a one-off like this one, it's not a sequel or anything. It was a one-off and I found it to be, Uh, an original for sure and he is an original a lot of his work is very interesting and he does it in a very artsy way you know what i mean yeah yeah it's it's like um there's not a lot of loose ends by the end of the story. Everything Mm -hmm. seems to kind of always tie up. You do. Yeah, yeah, you do. And it's the little things too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hidden uh, innuendos and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's That's like the village. Did you ever see the village? Um, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I didn't see all of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Something tells me I probably did see it a long time ago, but I just oh, yeah, don't it was remember. A while ago. Yeah, because I know it's 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 pretty old. So, mm-hmm. but definitely something to check out down the road. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, and I find that he always chooses some pretty decent actors too. 
Yes. So yeah, that was actually a really good movie. I would definitely recommend to anybody check it out for the first time. It's definitely it's good for kids too. It's not that scary nowadays. Kids don't get scared anyway. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yes, but I and I I echo that definitely. It was a really good movie. Um, definitely worth the um, hour and forty eight minutes. Um, Mm -hmm. So definitely take a look at it And they do have it on Disney Plus If you are a subscriber So check it out That's cool yeah. Yeah. So, well, that brings us to the end of another episode. And also, I'm going to throw it back to Bree so that we can get some information out to you so you can get in touch with us and tell us your experiences with the paranormal and also any paramedia things that you would like us to cover, any movies that you've seen that uh, definitely deserve a, a review and also to be on the the podcast as well. So, Brie, let us know how they can get in touch with us. Alrighty, so you can reach out to us at ParanormalFilesCanada at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook at Paranormal Files Canada. We are on Instagram as well at Canada Paranormal Files. And you can now find us on TikTok at PFC or Paranormal Files Canada. Tickety talk and we don't stop, so check it out. Check out the content that we have out there and on our other social media platforms. And also let it lets you know when we put out new content. And also we would like you to subscribe, to rate us any way that you can. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can also find us on YouTube too. You can listen to us on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. So definitely check out the stuff that we have there. Um, We do have a video of us doing a tour of the Aurelia Opera House from season three that is on there, which is pretty cool and interesting. So check out all the platforms that we have uh, with some great content. And also we'll be back with you again next month uh, in March, um, putting out some a new episode as well. So We look forward to seeing you then and also hearing your stories and and the things that you have. So everyone take care of yourself and don't forget to stay Stay spooky. spooky.